in India prior to the formal announcement in a preemptive move before any official complaint. And according to senior PTI office bearer Shirin Mazari, the mistake was made by the publishers as the map included in the book was not the one provided to them by Mr. Imran Khan. And we are just glad that this grave mistake has been spotted, you know, and measures are being taken to fix it. Otherwise, something like this from Imran Khan would seriously and surely not have gone down well with his ardent fans. Yeah. By the way, we were showing you a clip of a special talk to Express News. Uh, you can catch it, I think, online as well. Okay, now uh, in a surprising move, Saudi King Abdullah has announced that Saudi women will be able to run and vote in the 2015 municipal elections. How about that? Now, King Abdullah said Saudi women would also have the right to be appointed to the Consultative Shura Council, which is the formal body advising the king, whose members are all appointed by himself. And the changes will occur after municipal polls on Thursday this week. And uh, in his speech at the opening of the new term of the Shura Council, the king said, because we refuse to marginalize women in society, we have decided after deliberation with our senior clerics to involve women in the Shura Council as members starting from next term. We here on TMS say better late than never and also we would really love it if the Saudi women were allowed to um, drive as well, you know. Why not? Because that is a very, very basic thing that they could give them and that would go a long way as well. Okay, now the British Foreign Secretary has said that Israel is becoming increasingly isolated and time is running out for the country's leaders to reach a peace deal for a two-state solution with the Palestinians. Let's see something here. Now British officials are telling their Israeli counterparts that the historic changes of the Arab Spring and the growing international support for Palestinian statehood means that Israel's bargaining position will only weaken if talks remain deadlocked and William Hague insisted that the United Kingdom deplored any attempt to delegitimize Israel but friends of Israel should be increasingly concerned about its growing isolation in the international community and he also gave a clear signal that Britain would abstain if the request for statehood lodged at the UN by Mahmoud Abbas reaches a vote at the Security Council. A lot of heated discussions on this topic these days and I wonder how you guys feel, although I do know how you guys would feel. Um, we, we are all Muslims in Pakistan mostly at least, so you know, I would think I know. But anyway, do write in to me and give us uh, your views as well. Okay, this I think you are going to find rather interesting. Now, the Duke of Cambridge nearly ruined his father's Aston Martin DB6 when he drove it out of Buckingham Palace with his new bride on their wedding day. Reports have come out. Now, the newly married prince forgot to take the handbrake off. Can you beat that? Check this out. Obviously, very famous visuals there. Let's play it, please. I think these were the most iconic and new age images of a royal wedding that would stay in anybody's mind. Now driving from the wedding reception at Buckingham Palace to Clarence House while waving to the crowds, Prince William forgot to release the handbrake on the car which Prince Harry had decorated with heart-shaped balloons and a number plate that read just wet. And thankfully for the newlyweds, the engine's groans appear to have been drowned out by the applause of well-wishers gathered along the mall and um, also thanks to the auspicious occasion the young prince was forgiven for his negligence by his father prince charles for almost ruining his prized possession yeah. i don't think my father would have forgiven me for something like that driving with your handbrake on yeah, but it was a very special occasion and you can forgive him for doing that we are taking a very short break and when we come back we have a miniature artist with us this morning yeah, stay with us
welcome back. Thank you for joining us this morning. A few weeks back, I was at a dinner party at a place where there was an amazing collection of paintings and everybody was raving about one particular painting which frankly I couldn't make anything of. Incidentally, I was seated next to an artist, a painter, and I asked her if I was missing the point. I was relieved to hear that most of the times, most of the people can't really tell what the artist meant in their depiction. It's not for everyone to decipher. Yeah, we are joined this morning by a miniature artist who's made a rather formidable name for himself with the exhibitions he has held around the globe. Muhammad Imran Qureshi is associated with the Department of Fine Arts in the National College of Arts here in Lahore. And I'm going to start by asking him if I am particularly inapt at understanding good art or is it a global phenomenon? Hello, good morning, how are you? I'm good. Good to have you here, Imran. And I was looking at your wonderful stuff, but first of all, do answer me uh, that when people, you know, look at paintings and the artist obviously has something in mind when he's painting and he has an idea, a feeling, uh, do you expect people to get it instantly, what you mean when you paint? No, never, because when I'm making my own work hmm. and there are certain kind of idea behind it, and but it's not necessary that people should read it in the same way. Hmm. It's not a dictatorship kind of thing. Of course, like you everybody has you their own. Uh, yeah, everybody has their own way of looking at. But does it happen with your work that you meet people, and of course, art critics and art lovers, uh, that they know exactly what you must have been thinking when you? Yeah, did. to some extent, uh, they get the idea. They get the main idea, but then they further explore it, and they sometimes they come up with re with really interesting stories. Really? Yeah, okay. and. Yeah, but basically they get the they get the uh, gist of the, what you were yeah, trying yeah, to say. Okay, that's interesting. So I'm not alone, you know, if not trying to understand because I kind of did in that gathering where I was sitting, I did feel kind of left out because I yeah. wasn't understanding what it meant. But people can take your idea forward as well, you know, whatever they are feeling, they can feel yeah, that yeah, 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 the yeah, painting because too. the good artist when which has no specific boundary that you have to see that work in hmm. that specific frame. Right, it right. should be like uh, beyond that frame. Exactly. It should be like unlimited. <laughs> and open to interpretation. Open to interpretation. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you do mostly, um, you do a lot of work which we are going to show, but mostly your work is miniatures. Uh, is it very difficult to downsize anything that you want to make? Like I was trained as a miniature painter from National College of Arts in 1990 to 93 okay. and my practice was like my I, academically it was very strict uh, training at NCA mm -hmm. and but later on I, I explore it I break the boundaries of that mm -hmm. traditional of miniature course. painting and I took it further away from that uh, size or mm -hmm. medium and then I explore it on not in the form of the surface but, but I took it to the architectural space as well in some of my work. And of course, I, we are going to show that because I, yeah. I would really like to ask you some of the questions, like this one. Yeah, this was this was the work called Blessings Upon the Land of My Love. And I did it in Sharjah okay. in 2011. And this was a huge installation, about 90 by 90 feet oh, big okay. courtyard. And this was for Sharjah Biennial, which is an international art exhibition, okay. which happened in Sharjah every two years. Right. And I was one of the artists representing Pakistan there. So, and I got first prize on this piece uh, by the wow. king of Sharjah. And uh, uh, this was in Kabul. Uh, this is called Time Changes. And in Kabul, this was the first exhibition of contemporary art. I absolutely uh, love this. So this yeah. was also, uh, as you say, installation. This is at that place. This was at that place. Uh, the idea is that I try to create the dialogue between my own vocabulary and the architectural space. Hmm. Because if the work is for some specific uh, space, hmm. uh, the site-specific installation, it exactly. should have some reason of doing it into and that. And some, some relevance Yeah, to some it relevance. Otherwise, you can do it at any place. But uh, Imran, does that mean that if, for instance, it's Kabul or Sharjah or wherever it is, you have to go visit that place first? And yeah, you have to I see go it. there, I do the site, uh, site visit, I give lots of uh, proposal, then I come up with one idea. And then yeah. you obviously have to be at that place when you make it as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 of course. Wow, This so was in Venice, uh, the image that you are seeing. This one? Yeah, yeah. Venice Biennial. Okay. It was two years before. And these, this is water, basically, that's what you are depicting. Yeah, because the Venice is 
Or, of it course, that is yeah, water. It came that's through right. the inspiration. How lovely! So that's and people, obviously, uh, I mean, I, I, it's new for me, and I'm sure for uh, my viewers as well, because we think of painters and artists uh, that they have a specific, you know, and a mold, and yeah. th that is how it will be. A miniature will be small, a big painting would be big, mm. but actually, to make something at a space is something very new. Is it a new concept? No, no, no. It's not new, but. Like I have done lots of site specific work you, and you recently I, I have been selected for Sydney Biennial which is happening next, next year in 2012. So I am going to visit the site first and then I will give them a few proposals. Let's see. Interesting. Yeah, but works. obviously you, uh, when you do that like in Kabul or in, in Sharjah or whatever, yeah. you also keep that, that theme of that country in mind as well or is it your, totally your own? Uh, of course. Uh, when I'm doing it some way, in some specific area, it reflects hmm. that uh, the culture or the tradition of that part as well, hmm. or the political situation, whatever. Course, but yeah. and but it's a kind of nice blend of my own experiences and hmm. their right. Uh, Okay, something like this now, um, I'm wondering like, you know, obviously people uh, these days, art sells for like millions of dollars all over the world. If somebody who makes it big, yeah. I mean, there is no limit to how much people are, you know, ready to give for that kind of thing. Now, obviously this would just be your impression. Nobody can buy it. Nobody can buy it. Yeah. This so is just... Your self-satisfaction. Yeah, self-satisfaction, you can say. So not all artists don't work to make money? Mm, no, not at all. Like, what about you? Like I'm earning money, money through my other work, but hmm. not necessarily that everything should be <laughs> sold out huh, at the end of the show just to make the money. Interesting. I, I like your, uh, I think, love for your art because you are going beyond it as well. Yeah, in fact, the, when I was doing the site-specific work in Kabul, I got really interesting comment from a very, very common person who hmm. was uh, working on the build in the building he was a labor man and he was looking at it and then i asked him what what do you like from out of this whole exhibition he said he said that your installation is really special for us because you have done only for this exhibition and right. it is not for sale exactly and this is purely for us that's so right. huh. then i got really i really and appreciated that is a reward that. enough yeah exactly how nice and obviously when you go away when you are out of that place this is painted over yeah, or it stays they over washed there it off after oh, the because show. it would yeah. be done for other artists as well yeah, yeah. how interesting is that at least for me it's a very new concept and this is the venice one and this is the venice one the water is coming from everything <laughs> yeah of course that is how venice is yeah now Imran, uh, how does an artist's mind develop under, now you know we keep on hearing that in the times of you know when there was the dictatorship of Zia, mm -hmm. Zia regime and all, they were, the arts really flourished in that. So yeah. uh, under oppressive times, arts really flourish as well. These present times are also very difficult in yeah. Pakistan. Yeah. I mean there is so much going on and there is so much that needs to be restored as well. Uh, I think sanity mm -hmm. would be one of them, those things as well. How does that affect you as an artist? I think you can see through my work, especially my last work which I did in Sharjah. Hmm. It was a whole courtyard. In fact, there is another image which, the, the where I am showing the whole courtyard. Okay. And it's uh, it's like a blood bath kind hmm. of thing. Hmm. And when people were coming, they were actually crying on the work. And they were reading it at so many different levels. Like there were people from, the audiences were not only from Pakistan but from uh, UAE and uh, West and uh, America hmm. and Australia, everywhere, a Chinese, Japanese and everyone was relating to that work and of they were course. saying that it's so much about them hmm. and today, <laughs> what Bilkul. is happening around them. Yeah, that's right. So everybody has their own interpretation about the work. So it always happened with hmm. most of the artists. Interesting, especially you're right because that that it, if you think of it as blood and everything, not just in Pakistan, if you think of the uh, natural calamities all yeah, around yeah. the world, in the fact, floods the Japanese, and the typhoons uh, and the earthquakes, yeah. when so I much did is it, happening. When I did that, the, there were some Japanese uh, uh, who were visiting the show and they said that they were relating it to the earthquake mm, and, and the recent tsunami, tsunami well. thing. So, and uh, there was people who were relating it to the Karbala mm, thing. Bilkul, and that's so true. They had so many different interpretations. Kind of interpretations. See, that is interesting. I'm glad that you, th this way you have also answered my question that you also can interpret it 
what is happening inside you if you yeah. know if you have witnessed anything and if you yeah. something you can relate it by yourself as well so like me do not be embarrassed if you don't understand a painting you know you can have your own interpretation of